Lord, I'm striving to be just like you. Lord, I'm striving to be just like you. Even though I fall short, I fall short. and I can't find my way, find my way, my way yeah. right there. Now we will have the reading of the law. John in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Okay, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22. We're going to read verses 14 and 15. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So it is good, sisters and brothers, to do what the Lord said and what, had, what he had Israel doing since we were the nation. And that is on the Sabbath day, have a reading of his law. Because, because if you don't keep the law, you're not going to get salvation. It's simple as that, sisters and brothers. That's why the Lord is bringing a great tribulation upon this earth, because he's going to have to bring something real terrible to get these people attention. Otherwise, he's going to have to put them all in the lake of fire. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, sisters and brothers, I've been watching this YouTube and watching ministers, and uh, it is the one thing that I see that's missing with these ministers. That is the word of God. I think uh, uh, that's why the Lord called me to put this lesson together years ago. In fact, it is titled, The Word of God. It is life and power. The Word of God. It is life and and power. See, the only reason for you to be here, sisters and brothers, is to hear what thus said the Lord. That's the only reason. You're not here for me to tell you how I feel. You're not here for me to tell you 
who I debated and beat up, you are here to learn what thus said the Lord. And when you go to church, you should go there with the same intentions as when you go to the supermarket. You go to get groceries and you leave with groceries. You go to the gas station, you go to get gas, and you leave with gas. So when you come to the house of God, you should be leaving with the word of God, sister and brother. But I look around, and the word have been woefully, I won't say mistalked. The word have been taken off the table, and something else have been put on the table. And the Lord told us about this. Let's go into Matthew, the 15th chapter. The Lord told us that this would happen, and nobody listens, sister and brother. This is the problem with man. We got to listen to the problem. It started in the Garden of Eden, and nothing has changed even today. We do not listen. Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. 15 and verse 1. Okay, read it. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the, the tradition of the elders? So why do you transgress the tra tradition of the elders? The tradition. Because we're talking tradition here. We got a lot of them. Go ahead and read. But they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Uh huh. But he answered and said unto them, uh -huh. why, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now, is it because they wash hands and they eat bread without washing their hands? You know, but then Jesus wasn't interested in that. He, asked, he then asked them a question. Why do you transgression the word of God with your tradition? Why do you do that? His commandments. Go ahead and read. For God commanded saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die to death. Now, but, now, this is the commandment, sister and brother. We read that, didn't we? Go ahead and read. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, uh -huh. by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Go ahead. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Now, in other words, he's telling you, look, as long as you say, if you get to the point where you're taking care of your father and your mother, and everything they get from you is a gift, and you, they don't have to pay you. You don't have to honor them. I didn't see nothing like that in the commandments that we read, did we? The honor is unconditional, sisters and brothers. Like a brother told me one time, <clears throat> my father ain't never cared nothing for me, but now he want me to treat him like a father. I said, he is your father. But what should I say? I said, whatever it is, don't let it be disrespectful. I said, because it's not on him. When you disrespect him or dishonor him, then you are putting yourself in jeopardy. It didn't say honor your mother and your father if they treat you good. He said, but by your traditions, what has happened? Go ahead. At the end of verse 6, thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. By your tradition. By, you know, you come up with your own set of laws. Look what he said now. Go ahead and read. Ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, uh -huh. this people draw of nine to me with their mouth Go ahead. and honor of me with their lips? Now you call them hypocrites, sister and brother. You hypocrites. Well, did the prophet Isaiah say, they honor me with their mouth, but their mind is far from me. Go ahead. But their heart is far from me. Uh huh. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So you're... Worshiping him for nothing. That's why I said, for in vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. And this is going to go on all day tomorrow, sister and brother. Now let's go, since he quoted Isaiah, let's go into Isaiah the 29th chapter. Isaiah chapter 29. <clears throat> all these people are going to show up tomorrow, and they're worshiping God for nothing. That's what in vain means. You're worshiping him for nothing, sisters and brothers. That's what Solomon said. God, don't give me too much, lest I forget where it came from. And don't give me too little, lest I steal and take your name in vain. What he mean is, I don't care if you're going to worship me and call on my name, but if you're going to mess around and steal and break my law, you're calling on my name for nothing. 
That's why, that's what people don't understand when they see, but the Lord said, don't take my name in vain. People try to come up with a name. What name is he talking about? Whatever name he called himself, if you're going to break his law, you're calling on that name for nothing. Y'all understand? So in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrine, commandments of men. Jesus quoted this, Isaiah chapter 29, and we're going to start reading at verse 9. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. Say yourselves and wonder. Uh -huh. Cry ye out and cry. Go ahead. They are drunken, but not with wine. Go ahead. They stagger, but not with strong drink. He said, say yourselves and wonder. Let's wonder what's going on. Crowd and cry, but they are drunken, but not with wine, and they stagger, but not with strong drink. What are they staggering with, sisters and brothers? False religion. Drunk with it. When you read the Bible, some of them will even say, I don't care what the Bible say. My pastor say. That means you drunk. Go ahead and read. For the Lord hath poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep uh -huh. and hath closed your eyes. Go ahead. The prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. The Lord done covered all of it, just like you're in a deep sleep. Not because the Lord did it, because he wanted to put you there. It's because you, re you refuse to listen, sister and brother. So you're just like you're in a deep sleep, and somebody's come and covered your eyes. You can't see nothing, no matter what they put in front of you. Go ahead and read. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Go ahead. Which men deliver to one that is learned, uh -huh. saying... Read this, I pray thee. Go ahead. And he said, I cannot. So now, the word is like somebody giving you a book that's closed and it's sealed. And they said, read this. I can't read it. Why? Go ahead. For it is sealed. Because it's sealed. Go ahead. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Go ahead. Saying, read this, I pray thee. Go ahead. And he said, I am not learned. No, that's like a person can't read. Like I say all the time. I mean, you, you, I've heard it said in the old days, you know, old Pastor Jones, he can't read a lick, but he sure can preach. What is he preaching if he can't read? So he said, look, I can't read it because uh, I can't, because I'm unlearned. Go ahead. So what, then what's left? Go ahead. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as his people draw near me with their mouth Go ahead. and with their lips do honor me, uh -huh. but have removed their heart far from me. Go ahead. And the fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So now, if you don't read the book, because it's sealed or either, you can't read it because you can't read. Sometimes the book can be wide open and it's sealed. Like Daniel, Daniel the prophet Daniel asked, uh, 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 the Lord for the understand. He said, look, close up the book until the time of the end. It was sealed. Like when John that wrote Revelation heard the seven thunders, he got ready to write, he said, write it not. It is sealed. In other words, it's there, but there's something inhibiting your vision and understanding. So now, the Lord gave two examples. A book that's sealed and a person that's supposed to talk about it can't read. So if you can't read the book for whatever the reason is, then the precepts steps toward the Lord is taught by, the word of God is taught by the precepts of men. In other words, you telling what's on your mind. What verse were we? That was verse 13. You are telling what's on your mind. Go ahead. Therefore, behold. I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people. Go ahead. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. Uh -huh. For the wisdom of that wise man shall pass. Go ahead. And the understanding of that prudent man shall be hid. So now, where are your wise men now? The one that's supposed to be preaching the word of God. Every Easter, they tell you that Jesus died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. When Jesus told you in Matthew that he was going to be in the grave for three days and three nights. Why is it that the ministers don't know? And they don't understand that you can't get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. Why? Because the book is sealed. And the wisdom of the wise man has gone south. 
They ain't wise no more. They flat out ain't going to say stupid. Uninformed. Why? Because they will not read the book. They will put the book in front of you and talk about the book. Well, you know, old Paul, and I tell you about old Peter. What do I care about Paul or Peter? What I care about is what they wrote. So when you're doing this, you don't believe in the Lord. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and go ahead. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. <laughs> You're turning the things upside down to be like a potter's clay. What you mean upside down, brother boy? All over the Bible, the Lord talking about coming, talks about coming to this earth. Tomorrow, in the Sunday church, everybody going to be talking about going to heaven. The Lord said, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the rest. It is a sign between me and my people. Tomorrow, they're going to be saying, well, you know, Sunday is the Christian Sabbath. The Lord said, everybody's ever died, he ain't going to raise them up until the last day. Tomorrow they're going to be telling you that your mama is in heaven. That old rotten John is in hell being barbecued. Ain't that turning upside down? Yes, it is. Surely, your turning things upside down is going to be like the potter's clay. What does that mean? God going to break it up because it's shaped wrong. Go ahead and read. For shall the work say of him that made it? He made me not. Don't, isn't this what the people are saying, sister and brother? That's right. They are actually saying that the Lord didn't make him. Go ahead and read. For shall the thing framed say of him that framed it? He had no understanding. So now you telling God that created you that he ain't got no understanding. Men don't, they don't understand what they're doing. People tell you, well, you see, Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah in heaven when he transfigured himself. But that same Jesus saying, no man's been to heaven but the one that came down. So how's he going to be talking to Moses and Elijah? So you're telling Jesus, look here, Jesus, you don't know what you're talking about. You're bumping your God. That's what the ministers are saying. Go ahead and read. Verse 17. Is it not yet a very little while? And Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. Uh -huh. And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. Now that's when the Lord take Israel back. Then when he do that, what's it going to happen then? Go ahead. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. What book? The one that's in your lap. The people that couldn't hear, now they're going to hear. Because the Lord said he's going to send you ministers after his own heart that's going to teach you, feed you with wisdom and understanding. That's right. That day, that let me know that this thing is going to go ahead on and only the few that's really blessed, relatively speaking, are going to come out of this false religion and come into the truth. That's why I say narrow is the, is, is the uh, uh, road that leads to, to life. Narrow and broad is the road that lead, leads to destruction. So he said, in that day, when he take Israel back and the Lord is in Jerusalem, everybody, even the deaf, going to hear the words of the book. Finish that. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. And the eyes of the blind is not talking physical blind. The eyes of the spiritual blind is going to see out of, blind, out of darkness, sister and brother. Just like the light going to be changed, turned on. But it's what they're going to hear, the word of the book. But when you're dealing with the word of the book, sister, and it's written in this book, sister and brother, you're going to get some wisdom. Let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Because nobody reads the book. You, you, you go to church. And he got, I, you know, I watch it, I'll be watching that. Well, you see, our sermon is going to come today out of 110th chapter of Psalm, the first half of the fourth verse. And he's going to preach to you all, that, and I'm saying, look, he's going to preach to you all that time. But what about all this book here? 
And you don't understand simple stuff like ain't nobody going to heaven. You watching the end of a funeral, they take a casket, put it in the ambulance, take it down, and put it in the ground. And you said that they in heaven, but you saw them go in the ground. I mean, your eyes are darkened. You don't see. Ecclesiastes 12, and let's start at verse 9, 12 and 9. Go, go ahead. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Because the pre pre preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Go ahead and read. Yeah, he gave good heed uh -huh. and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Uh -huh. The preacher sought out to find acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Now that's what the preacher did, sisters and brothers. He sought out many proverbs, many things that was written. And the order of things. And the preacher sought to find acceptable words. And that which was written upright, even the words of truth. That means you have to read something, don't you? If you don't read nothing, then how is it that you know what thus said the Lord? Go ahead and read. Verse 11. The words of the wise are as goals. Goals mean it drives you. I bet some of you got to the point you start getting some understanding and all of a sudden you can't put the book down. Are you listening to DVDs or CDs or something? You can't, you find yourself late at night planning and listening because you've been driven by the word of truth. You just want more and more and more. That's what it means when it said the word of the wise are like gold. Go ahead and read. And as nails fastened by the masses of assembly. And they're just like nails fastened by the masses of assembly. It is solid. It is correct. There ain't no room for maybe. A master of assembly, when he built a house, his house is correct. Everything is in order. All his measurements is good. Same thing. But then how many places do you get it from? Read the, finish that. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are given from how many shepherds? One shepherd. One shepherd. If you're going to go to another shepherd, you're going to get a different. I saw a man that's killing the Godhead, and then he's going to turn around and use the creation to show that this is a spirit that goes into one body, a different type of spirit, and he's going to go into Apocrypha and read that man was created without a soul. Well, the shepherd that dictated this Bible said, The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into a nostril, and man became a living soul. But then you go to another shepherd, he's going to tell you that God created man without a soul. So a soul had to come from heaven and, uh, and occupy it. I said, that's weird. I just saw an Edomite rabbi say the same thing. Two different shepherds, two different messages. Paul co-signed Moses when he said the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Yes, sir. That's a good example. So you get it from one shepherd. That shepherd that we get it from his name is Jesus. That's right. Let's go on to 1 Corinthians. The fourth chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. See, because when you drunk, you think all of a sudden you got this great rhythm that sprung up inside of you. It's just like me. I ain't teaching y'all what's written in the book. I'm teaching you what the Lord have called to come from within me. Oh, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. <laughs> so when I speak to you what the Holy Ghost said to me, no matter what you read in this book, it has superseded. Let's go on if, among all of these Sunday churches and a lot of the Sabbath. Seven-day churches that don't know the God of Israel. But people sit and people don't read. When you don't read, 
People can sell you anything. Give you a nice bottle and package it real good. Say, this is a good energy drink. But they got arsenic in it. And if you read the label, it said, do not drink, arsenic is in it. But you didn't read. You listened to whoever gave it to you. What you going to do? You gub it down. Then you, when you start dying, you, what happened? What happened? Oh, uh, it's too late now. That what happened is going to come when the Lord comes, sister and brother. Four and one. Okay, go ahead. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ uh -huh. and stewards of the ministries of the, of the mysteries of God. See, we're the ministers of Christ. We are, and we are stewards of the mysteries of God, not our own. Go ahead and read. Moreover, it is required in stewards uh -huh. that a man be found faithful. Go ahead. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of, or of man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not mine own self. So look, when you are teaching the word the way it is, then can't nobody judge you. You don't care about somebody calling some kind of judgment. On you, Because you don't judge yourself. Why? Because the message is not yours. It's the Lord. How are you going to hold me accountable for what thus said the Lord and I can read it to you? Therefore, no matter, you can't judge me and I don't even judge myself. Why? Because the message I give is not mine. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. For I know nothing by myself. This is the thing. For I know nothing by myself. Go ahead. Yet am I not hereby justified. That's the Jesus. So now I'm not so, I'm not justified. Go ahead and read. But he that judges me is the Lord. So the one that judges me is the Lord. Because he judged me whether I'm going to put his word out there the way he had it written and delivered to me. So it's the word of God that counts. Skip down and read verse 7. Verse 7. And go ahead. For who maketh thee to differ from another? Uh-huh. And what hast thou that, that didst not receive? Go ahead. Now if thou didst receive it, why doest thou glory? Go ahead. As if thou hadst not received it. Pay attention to what you're saying here now. For what? For who maketh you different from another person? That is reading the book. You understand? And what has you that you didn't receive in the beginning? Now, if you didn't receive it, why do you glory as if you didn't receive it? Like I got some great big knowledge. This thing come from one shepherd. If all of us read the same thing, we come up with the same conclusion. We are reading the book together. So why is it that you're getting all puffed up like you know something that somebody else don't know? Or do you come up with some great knowledge that originated inside of you instead of you receiving it and passing it on? Where has the boasting, sisters and brothers? Let's go into Psalm chapter 68. Where has the boasting? Let me show you how this thing goes. Psalm chapter 68. That's why I listen. Get all these people preaching like the debate. One preacher making his uh, uh, making his, a living out of debate. Debate what? Let's read the book and let it fall where it falls. I don't do that. One time, years ago, a brother got me caught up in a debate in Atlanta. I said, this ain't going to happen no more. Oh, I dare with it. Ain't no problem. But the whole thing is, why am I here? I'm a, I am a minister. I'm not a debater. And I ministers the word. So why, what is it for me to debate? When I don't see it like that. Well, whether you see it like that, that's the way it is. People love to say that I don't see it like that. But the word is not mine. The word is not in the individual. The word, in the individual, the word is the Lord. We're going to read one verse. Verse 11. Psalm 6 to 8 and verse 11. One verse, but it says a whole lot. Go ahead. The Lord gave the word. The Lord gave the word. Go ahead. Great was the company of those that published. And great was the company of those that published it. I'm just one of those that published in the word that the Lord gave, sisters and brothers. If the Lord didn't give it, 
It should not come out of your mouth, sisters and brothers, because it comes from one shepherd. That's why I say he gave the word, but great was the company, these are the ministers that publishes it. Word come from one shepherd, but a whole lot of preachers preaching it if they deal with the word of God. Let's go into 2 Peter, the first chapter. These, uh, this is what you have to get used to. It's reading what the Lord has put out, sisters and brothers, instead of going, well, I'm going to have a good sermon. I'm going to see how dynamic the ministers are going to speak today. I don't care nothing about dynamics. I care about truth. If you want to deal with theatrics, then go to the movie. You want to deal with the word of God, then you come to the right place. Second Peter, the first chapter. Because I come to the conclusion that these people don't believe that there's consequences at the end of the line, sister and brother. The wrong time to find out that if you jump off a Tall building like Seals Tower that you're going to die if you hit the ground. That's why you, after you done jump. Wait a minute, I can die. It's too late now. Don't find out when you're splatting on the ground. Check it out now. Then maybe you won't jump. Second Peter chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 16. 1 and 16. Second Peter 1 and 16. Go ahead. For we have not followed currently the vast fable. Uh huh. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. But we're our witnesses of his majesty. He said, now look, what we're telling y'all, we didn't come up with this. This ain't no fable. We didn't devise this to make y'all listen to us or get money. We was our witness to the Lord. And we heard what the Lord heard. Go ahead and read. For he received from God the Father on in glory. Go ahead. When there came such a voice to him from the excellence, from the excellent glory. Go ahead. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said, we heard when the Lord said that. That's why I like to see a preacher that teach that Jesus and the Father is the same person. I like to see, well, what did Jesus, what did, what did Peter them here come from the Father and they were standing there with Jesus? Who was talking? But he said, we heard this. But go ahead and read. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. Uh-huh. When we were with him in the holy mount. We heard it when he said, it's beloved, my beloved son, hear ye him. Go ahead and read. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. But if you get confused in what we say, go to prophecy. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Go ahead and read. Well, until ye do well that ye take heed. Uh-huh. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Now, they have people telling you that they're New Testament Christians. Don't want to deal with prophecy. And so when some of them go back there, they mess it up. They, but they do good of you to uh, take heed and tell you get some understanding. That's till your light rises and come on. Go ahead and read. Until the day dawn uh -huh. and the day star arise in your hearts. Go ahead. Knowing this first, uh -huh. that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Knowing this first, that there's no prophecy in the scripture is of any private interpretation. Go ahead and read. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. The but prophets didn't speak by their own will. Go ahead and read. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But they were the holy men of God. And they spoke that they was moved by the Holy Ghost. Well, Brother Boy, you know what, what I, it said, Spirit. Look, the Holy Ghost is God's word, sisters and brothers. Jesus told you in St. John 6, chapter 63, flesh profited nothing. It is the words that I speak. They are spirit and they are life. They was moved by the Holy Ghost. Even when they didn't want to say nothing. I'm going to give you a good example. Let's go into Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. Because when you get this word in you, things can happen. And you say, well, I'm, it ain't none of my business. <laughs> I'm going to leave this one alone. You're going to find out it don't work like that. There's one thing with the word of God. 
it proves itself in you. When it get in you, it proves to you what he said it would do to you. Now, this is the prophet Jeremiah, verse 20. So Jeremiah was prophesying. And let's see what happened to him. Verse 20, uh, 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 chapter 20, rather, chapter 20. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Jeremiah 20 and 1. Okay, read it. Now, Pastor, the son of Emma, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. See, Jeremiah was prophesying what's going to happen. He was prophesying the truth. So now when this Pasha, which was a priest now. That's right. Not the regular guy. Heard what Jesse, heard the thing that Jeremiah prophesied. What did he do? Go ahead. Then Pastor smoked Jeremiah the prophet. Uh huh. And put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin. Go ahead. Which was by the house of the Lord. So Pastor heard him talking. He come up and he hit him. Probably hit him in the mouth. Then took him to the stockades. You know what they, them old thing you see on them old movies where they had your head and your arm there. People come by and they hit you with rotten apples and all kind of stuff. Did that to Jeremiah. And look what Jeremiah said to the Lord. Skip down to verse 7. Go ahead and read. Oh, Lord, thou hast deceived me. Thou hast deceived me. I thought the people was going to love this. That's why he told the prophet Ezekiel when he read, him, read the scroll with the word of God in it. He said, eat it. It's going to be sweet in your mouth, but bitter in your stomach. Told John that wrote Revelation, eat, take the little book out of the angel's hand and eat it. It's going to be sweet in your mouth, but bitter in your stomach. Because you think that some, the people that you love are going to love this truth. And they turn around and they smite you. If not with the fist, sometime with the mouth. Then that's when you find out, boy, I was deceived. I thought that the Lord, the Lord deceived me. I thought that the people were going to love this. Start back at the top of that verse. Go ahead. Oh, Lord, thou hast deceived me. Go ahead. And I was deceived. Go ahead. Thou art stronger than I uh -huh. and hast prevailed. Uh -huh. I am in the risen daily. Everyone mocketh me. He said, I didn't expect this. I am in the risen daily and everybody mocks me. Everybody. Go ahead and read. But since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil uh -huh. because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. So the word of the Lord was made a reproach. All of a sudden, you're going to go and tell your people. Jesus wasn't born on the 25th day of December. No, he wasn't. Grandma is dead. All of her. That's right. You are not going to heaven. Jesus is going to come here. All of a sudden, you are in trouble. They're going to say ugly things about you. Skip now and read verse 10. Verse 10. Go ahead. For I heard the defaming of many. So he's out heard of the defaming of many. Go ahead. Fear on every side. And fear on every side. Report, say they. Uh huh. And we will report it. Go ahead. All my familiars watch for my haunting. All his familiar friends watch for him to fall. Go ahead. Saying. For adventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, uh -huh. and we shall take our revenge on him. So we're going to listen, and we're going to catch him, and we're going to do something to him. Ezekiel, uh, uh, Jeremiah heard all this, and let me show you what he said. Back up and read verse 9. Verse 9, read it. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. Look, I ain't going to make the mention of the Lord no more. I'm through with it. Go ahead. Nor speak anymore in his name. Also, the name of Jesus, even when it wasn't the name, it wasn't the name of Jesus that the people are kicking against. It is the name of the Lord in whatever language it's called. He said, I will not speak in his name anymore in his name. But go ahead. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire. But what was in his heart? His word. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Go ahead and read. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, uh -huh. and I could not stay. I was weary with being quiet. So all of a sudden, I couldn't stay. I found myself in the middle of it. Thus said the Lord. That didn't happen to you. You be sitting down, somebody teaching somebody out to supposed to be the word of God, and you know it's wrong. And you don't, I'm going to stay out of it. Ain't none of my business. 
All of a sudden, you find yourself, look here, sister, look, brother. That's not what the Bible said. And you start dropping it on them. Now they're looking at you with the big eyes and the mouth open. You tried to stay out of it. But that word that was shut up like fire in your bone, that is the spirit of the Holy Ghost that drove the prophet, which is the word of God. It is the word. Yeah, it, is. it is the word. That's where it all come from. The word that you preach. It comes from the Lord, not from your mind. Let's go on to 1 Peter, the first chapter. It is the word, sister and brother. And that's something that have escaped the churches nowadays. I look at theatrics. I look at everything. I look at screaming and hollering. But I'm listening for the word. There you see, Christ and the Father is one and the same. Then Isaiah, the night chapter tell you, you're going to call him wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to ask the question is, who was this when the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy foot to my end when I push through? Who is this Lord that spoke to the Lord? Who is this God that said, I have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, thy God, have anointed thee with oil above that. Who is that? All of a sudden, somebody got a problem. That's right. Sometimes when the people say apples are oranges, the way for you to fix that, you ain't got to raise no hell. Just go and get you an apple and an orange and put it on the table. So is this the same fruit? No, sir. My fruit. The Lord word kills all lies. First Peter, first chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 3. First Peter, first chapter, verse 3. Go ahead. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which according to his abundant mercy uh -huh. have begotten us again unto a lively hope. Through his abundant mercy have begotten us again into a lively hope. Go ahead. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So when Jesus was rose from the dead, that gave us hope yeah, that yeah. we will rise if we die before the Lord come. He begotten us with a lively hope. To go, go ahead. To an, to an inheritance incorruptible Go ahead. and undefiled, and that fate of not away, reserved in heaven for you. You're waiting when the time comes. Go ahead and read. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Pay attention to this fifth verse. It says a lot. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Whose faith? Your faith. How's the word of power of word of God keep you? It keeps you if you believe it. Therefore, you're going to obey it. Therefore, it's going to keep you until the time of salvation, which shall be revealed as soon as you die. Uh-uh. In the last time. In the last time. That's the last day. Jesus said, Whosoever eat my flesh and drink my blood shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. But when you read the word of God, you know this? Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and read it. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Then it's the same salvation. The prophets have inquired of it, and they have searched diligently. Go ahead and read. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. And they told you about the grace, this free gift that God is going to give you, this eternal life that Jesus is going to return to you that Adam took away from you. The prophets told you about that. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and read it. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves 
but unto us that did minister the things. So now they ain't the only one that saw it, but we saw it too. Go ahead. Which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Now look, it's a revealed to us by them who preached the gospel with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Even the gospel that the angels desire. What is this Holy Ghost that was sent down from heaven? The Word of God. That is so simple, ain't it? It came from heaven. The Word of God. Skip down to verse 24. Verse 24. And go ahead. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. Uh huh. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. That's with us. We get old and we die but before we even get ready to know how to live. Go ahead and read. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And this is the same word that's being preached to you right now. It goes through every generation, sisters and brothers. Every generation. This is the word that the prophet sent down. From heaven or either the ones that the prophets preached with the Holy Ghost that sent from heaven. The word of God. Let's go into Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Because it is the word, sisters and brothers. You should not go to church and don't have a Bible so you can check this preacher out. If you don't check him out, you end up in the lake of fire. It is your fault. Because the Lord had the book written in your language, and had it and made it available to you. So the spirit of the prophet is subject to not only the prophets, it's subject to the people that's listening too. If you don't listen and you end up in the lake of fire, it is you. Because you let people tell you you can break the law. God understands. You can't keep that old law. It's too hard. Then the Lord brings some drama on you when you start going stupid. Let me show you what's going to heal you. We're going to start at verse 17. Verse 17. Go ahead. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. So your transgression, breaking God's laws and your sin, that's what gets you afflicted. Go ahead and read. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat, uh -huh. and they draw near unto the gates of death. Sometimes it get real rough. Go ahead and read. Then they cry unto the Lord in Get their trouble. enough for you to try or to cry unto the Lord in what? In their trouble. In their troubles? And he saveth them out of their distress. And he saveth them out of their distress. How did he do that? Read he, it. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. His word, sister. His word. If you walk in the word, it might get rough sometimes, but sisters and brothers, you come out of it. It's all that simple. It heals you. See, people looking for the dramatic that the Lord did to get your attention when he first come in, you know, like healing people. In the, look, that was to get your attention. A lot of people that was healed got sick and died again. But if you get this spiritual healing that the word is going to give you, you're going to live forever. Which one do you want? Well, brother, boy, do this. How come we don't cast out devils? I said, every time the Lord have me install this word in you, you have cast the devil out of you. But we don't understand that because don't nobody read the word. Let's go to St. John, the 17th chapter. Because this whole thing, the Lord have orchestrated it, sisters and brothers. It is the Word. That's what you come here to learn, the Word of God. You didn't come here to hear a good story. You come here to learn how to save yourself. And how do you learn to save yourself? 
through the word of God. I can't save you. Can't no man save you. You got to save yourself. And if in, order, and in order for you to save yourself, you have to know how. You know the word know how? You know where it come from? Knowledge. That means you need some knowledge. And the knowledge in this case is the knowledge of the word of God. St. John 17 and verse 1. 17 and 1. Read it. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. I wonder, I wonder what this preacher that said to Jesus the Father Say when you read something like this here. And so Jesus praying to himself. Mm -mm. But skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own, with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Glorify me with your own self when I was you. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Oh, it just said that? No, it didn't. Oh, glorify me, Father, with the glory I had with you before the world was with you. Go ahead and read. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out Go of the world. Go ahead. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, uh -huh. and they have kept thy word. And you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Go ahead. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Uh-huh. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Wait a minute. You mean Jesus didn't give them some great force that's going to make you gyrate and fall and jump up and down? Not at all. And speak in a language that don't nobody understand? Uh-uh. He simply said, I have given them the words that you gave me. This is a strange guy that's talking to himself, but go ahead and read. And they have received them. And I've known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. How did they do that? They did it because they received his word, and they believed it. Go ahead and read. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, uh -huh. but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Wait a minute. You mean Jesus don't pray for the world? No, he don't. He only prayed for his servants that the Father had given him? Yes. That's kind of hard. That's kind of contrary, ain't it? Lord love everybody. The Lord love a man that's raping your daughter. He love a man that's destroying women and children to show that I'm, the, I'm, I'm it. And he want us to pray for him? People say, well, brother, will you ain't, I don't know. Brother, will you pray for me? I'm going to preach. Will you pray for me? I said, no. Wait a minute, brother, you're a man of God. You're supposed to pray for everybody. I said, where'd you read that? I get to know you, see what kind of man he is, and maybe you might be worth praying for. But if I don't know nothing about you, I ain't praying for you. You might be a murderer, rapist. You might be an antichrist, hate God. And I'm going to pray for you. If I say anything, I say, Lord, pray that this person get enough sense to know that you got to have some sense. What verse is that? That was the end of verse 9. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He said, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for all of these, my servant. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Go ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Go ahead. Thy word is true. Oh, so that's what you want. Sanctify them through your word. Right. Not something that go inside of you other than your word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Yes. Go ahead and read. Go ahead, skip down to verse, uh, uh, skip down to verse uh, uh, 20 and go ahead. Neither pray I for these alone. I ain't praying just for these apostles I got here, these 12. Go ahead and read. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's the word that I gave them. I pray for them too. That covers every generation, don't it? See, sisters and brothers, if you really believe in God, through the writings of his servant, you're going to do the thing and you're going to get it right. Let's go into Romans, the 10th chapter. 
Because it's a myth to me. How is it that you believe something if you ain't never heard it? And that is a big problem, sister. You see, I got faith. I say, in what? Can't even tell you. Well, I got faith in God. Do you believe that everybody that's ever died is still dead except for Jesus? No. I don't know what you got faith in then. Romans 10 and verse 13. Romans chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 13. Go ahead and read it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't dispute that, but let's look at all of it. Let's just don't stop. Go ahead and read. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can you call on somebody in whom you have not believed? Go ahead. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can you believe in something, in somebody that you ain't never heard of? Him? Go ahead and read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how can they hear without a preacher? I'm talking about a real preacher, sister, and brother. Go ahead. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Uh-huh. As it is written... How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So how can you preach your health except you be sent? How do you know you're sent? All you got to do is listen to him, then go in his Bible and check him out. If he is preaching to you what's written in this book, he was sent. Go ahead. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Go ahead. For Isaiah saith, Lord. Who have believed our report. Go ahead. So then faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by what? By hearing. Go ahead. And hearing by the word of God. And hearing by the word of God. That's how you get faith. When you hear the word of God, you believe it. And the only one that's going to bring you the word of God is the preacher that is sent. And the reason you know he's sent is because whatever he teach you, you can go to this Bible and read it. If the Lord sent him, all right. I didn't know the message was here, but I see now the message is here. But now, sisters and brothers, the people have inundated the people so bad with bad doctrine until people can't deal with sound doctrine no more. That's why when you open your mouth, you start a fight. Let's go into 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. People can't deal with it no more. And everybody wants everything blown out of position, out of, out of condition. You know, the word of God is not good enough no more. It's not. You see, a lot of Hebrew brothers that run into this word and, and they was doing good. But it got to the point it wasn't good enough no more. Now they got to go somewhere else and get involved in something else. You got to make it look good. You got to look around and look at the heathens and try and see if you can fit the word and the behaving like the heathen when the Lord told you not to go in the way of the heathen. Well, they did it. We just doing it with the word of God. What did the word of God tell you to do? That's what you do, sister and brother. But the thing about it, when you bring sound doctrine to people, they got a problem. 2 Timothy 4, and we're going to start at verse 1, 4 and 1. Okay, go ahead. I charge thee therefore before God uh -huh. and the Lord Jesus Christ, go ahead. who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Pay attention to what you just read. One verse, it just debunked all of this modern day Christian. Ah, that brother boy, he said, I charge ye therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that's the living, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So if ain't nobody going to get judged until he comes, then why is it that you got people in heaven and hell? Well, there has to be some kind of judgment to get him now, don't it? Right away, that one verse just debunked all things that these people call Christianity. Go ahead and read. Preach the word. Uh-huh. Be instant in season 
out of season. Be, preach the word, it said. Be instant in season, out of season. Go ahead and read. Reprove. Uh-huh. Rebuke. Go ahead. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. In other words, I want you to reprove a person and rebuke a person that's wrong, and you do it with patience and sound and doctrine. In other words, open the book. People call me, brother, boy, I want to, do, I want to know about this. I say, you got your book with you? Because we're going to go to the book. Yes, sir. If you're going to get into it with somebody in the Word of God, break out the book. That's the only way you're going to do it with doctrine. Go ahead and read. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Go ahead. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That time is here right now. People won't endure sound doctrine. Mm -mm. They get mad at you when you say Christmas Christ and down. Well, you can get the children, the gifts, and why are you going to give them something that is going to imply that Christ uh, was born and he didn't? Why are you going to do that? I used to have a neighbor. You know, he's dead now. He used to have a, a Christmas party every year. Want to invite me to. Where are you Christmas party? I said, no, I don't do Christmas. Well, you know what? We ain't going to use the word Christmas. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to call it an annual party. I said, okay, do it in August and I'll be there. <laughs> in the story. Because right. I done told him what it meant, but he couldn't endure it. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth uh -huh. and shall be turned unto fables. That's, and, and what is a fable? Christmas, Easter, go on to heaven, eat anything. All you got to do is pray over it. Your mother's in heaven smiling down. Oh, Rotten John is being barbecued. That is a fable, all of them. And I can go on and on. Go ahead and read. But watch thou in all things. Uh -huh. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Make full proof of your ministry. How do you do that? By going into this book. Yes, sir. That's how you make full proof. You know, arguing with somebody where you believe this in. I don't care how preacherly you sound. If you lying, you lying. Yeah.
Thank you.